Hey guys, Tony here. Happy Sunday. I hope all of you had a great weekend. And if you are a movie fan, I hope you took advantage today of National Cinema Day and went out and took the family to a $4 movie. I have been talking to you guys over the past couple years on and off about the importance of having a balanced portfolio, one that is not highly leveraged into one risky stock. Having a portfolio balanced in blue chip companies where you can sleep at night, companies that have a long track record of profits and growth. With that in mind, let's talk tonight about Disney. It's trading at $83 down from $203 in 2021. Is now the time to start paying attention to Disney if you're a value investor. All right, why Disney? Well, let's look at the green line I drew on the chart here back in 2021 when Disney was peaking at $203. I drew that line at about 85 bucks saying when Disney came back down to 85 bucks, I would start to consider an ad of Disney to my portfolio. I haven't owned Disney since the 90s. It took two and a half years of patience waiting for that price to come down, but come down it did. Here we are now below $85, a price that Disney has not seen since 2014. And the question on everybody's mind is, is Disney going to go lower than 83 bucks? Well, yeah, it sure could. Everything is gonna depend on management. But first, let's get the elephant out of the room. I know that there is a lot of political backlash going on regarding Disney and their so-called woke agenda. Guys, I don't care about politics when I'm looking at value investing. I care about is the company a value relative to what their potential could be in five or 10 years. Yes, there are some problems in Disney management over the past couple of years and Kathleen Kennedy over at Lucasfilms. I think that in the end, capitalism trumps politics and that the management will get these issues worked out. This video is just kind of an opener, a general starting the discussion about Disney. We're going to be following it a lot more closely now that it's in a price that has my interest. Let's talk a little bit about Disney and I want to hear your comments. Do you like Disney? Do you own it? Do you hate them? Would you never support this company? Let me know what you think. Let's get right into the details. Disney has a lot of different revenue streams, starting with their parks that everybody is familiar with around the world. Disney Studios is another powerhouse behind the company that is Disney, including a lot of names that people are familiar with besides just Disney. They own Pixar, Lucasfilm, Marvel Studios, Searchlight Pictures, and 20th Century Studios. They have their streaming business, which includes Disney Plus, Hulu, and ESPN. Disney Cruise Lines is wildly popular with families, and they have some new ships planned to be added to the fleet in coming years. And then, of course, they have merchandising with all kinds of toys and clothing. Disney released their latest quarterly earnings on August 9th. I'll put a link to this presentation in the video details if you're interested in looking through that. I'm not going to go through it in detail in this video. We'll start covering the quarterly announcements at the next quarterly meeting. Key takeaways is that the top line revenue continues to grow 22.3 billion for the quarter that just ended. However, they did take a loss for the quarter. When we are looking for blue chip value investments to be the bench strength in our portfolio, we want to see charts like this with revenue that is growing year after year after year. And they have had a couple hiccups here and there, 2020 obviously with the pandemic, but you can see that this company has a long history of top line revenue growth. Disney Plus launched to great fanfare in November 2019, about four years ago, and they are still working through the pricing models, finding the sweet spot. In the latest quarter, there was a small decrease in the domestic subscribers and a small increase in international subscribers. Looking at Hulu, they had a small increase and a small decrease on ESPN. And when we end this video, I'm gonna talk about the ESPN pin deal for online sports gambling. That is the piece of this that I think you're gonna find very interesting. We'll get to that in just a second. When we look at parks, the revenue was up in Q3 2023 compared to Q3 2022. However, the operating income was down 13%. And I wouldn't want to end this video without at least giving you a glimpse of the upcoming theatrical releases that Disney Studios is working on. When I punch the numbers into my green, yellow, red dashboard to see how safe is Disney as an investment, we got some red on there, we got some yellow. It is not completely safe just yet. 
compared to something like a Costco, which is all green. Let's talk about the yellows. Is Disney profitable? Yes, in general. However, they did have a loss in the last quarter, as we talked about, and that is something that they are working on through cost cutting. Their earnings per share momentum has slowed down, so I have that as yellow. The revenue growth rate is low, lower than a high growth company. This is pretty traditional though for Disney. I also have dividends as yellow because they have historically paid a dividend, although they are not at the moment. And I have management colored in red because they are struggling with their consumer base. They are struggling with the agenda that some people perceive they are pushing. That is not the discussion of this video, but I think that based on a lot of the consumer backlash against Disney right now, we need to consider this a red and see if this is something they can fix. If they don't, that red right there is going to let the price of Disney fall well below where it's at at $83 right now. Disney has some issues to work through, no doubt, and we will be providing some coverage on that in the coming months and years as they work through it, and we will see together if they are successful in that or not. But I wanna wrap up this video talking about the deal that was recently announced with their subsidiary ESPN and Penn Entertainment, a $1.5 billion 10-year deal. ESPN recently announced an agreement with Penn Entertainment to launch ESPN Bet, a branded sports book for fans in the United States. Penn Entertainment will rebrand its current sports book and relaunch as ESPN bet effective this fall in the 16 legalized betting states where Penn Entertainment is licensed. The rebrand includes the mobile app website and mobile website. This is a cash deal to Disney for one and a half billion dollars paid out over 10 years. In addition to the cash included in the deal is $500 million worth of warrants to purchase approximately 31.8 million shares of Penn common stock. Plus, there are options to receive bonus warrants depending on the performance of ESPN bet. I did begin a position in Disney late last week as it dropped below that $85 mark. Although I do want to urge some caution because we don't know if we're at the bottom yet or if it could tumble even further. Some people have price targets as low as $40 for Disney. That is going to depend on their next couple quarterly results and the general economy as well. As we look at the daily and the weekly chart, there are not a lot of signs of strength just yet. So I do want to urge some caution on that. Although as we look at the monthly chart, you can see that it is approaching the 200 moving average right here, this pink line. That is going to be a key test of support in the coming months. If it drops below this key support level, then it very easily could continue down. Where we go from here with Disney is a bit uncertain, so I urge you to do your own due diligence. Let me know your comments down below what you think. Certainly could go lower than 85 bucks, lower than $83. But if you have the kind of long-term outlook that you should as an investor, thinking of these blue chip plays as a five or 10 year investment, uh, price target I have for Disney by 2027 is back up in the $180, $200 range. Analysts have a 12-month forecast for Disney with a low of 76, average of 118, high of $146. Revenue forecast between now and 2027 ranges between $100 billion and $120 billion in 2027. From the current 2022 revenue of $82.7 billion and the estimated average revenue in 2023 of $90 billion. Where do I come up with my price estimate for Disney just for purposes of this video? Let's just look at the earnings per share forecast this is analyst forecast between now and 2027, increasing from an average forecast for 2023 of $3.76 to $9.23 in 2027 using a PE ratio of about 22. That gets us in that $200 range in 2027. If you want to be a little more conservative and use a lower PE ratio and forecasting what a 2027 price might be, that certainly is acceptable also. 
Disney has a average PE ratio that varies depending on the year. You can see on this chart here, anywhere from 14, 15, 18. I'll leave that up to you guys to decide and let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Thank you for watching guys. If you got some value out of this, be sure and hit that like button, share and subscribe. If you're new here to the channel, let me know in the comments what other tickers you would like me to provide some ongoing coverage on. I have a whole bunch of other videos coming for you this week on other stocks in my portfolio as we discussed at the beginning and you can look forward to those coming in the coming days. I am Tony DeNaro. Thank you for watching and I will see you on the next video.